The law of independent assortment states that alleles of genes assort independently of each other. Okay, first of all, why on earth do people think it's okay to define a word by using the word in the definition? The law of independent assortment is when the alleles assort independently? What? Second, it does not help that you are taught the law of segregation first simply because it is Mendel's first law and the law of independent assortment second because it is Mendel's second law when really the law of independent assortment happens first and the law of segregation happens second. So here's my explanation and no we are not going to talk about Mendel's peas. To be honest the only time I ever think about peas is when I'm eating top ramen or something. Let's say that red represents the chromosomes that came from the mother and green represents the chromosomes that came from the father. Okay? So now, are you ready for the law of independent assortment and the law of segregation? Well, here it is. The law of independent assortment says, during metaphase one, all the greens do not need to be on one side, and all the reds do not need to be on the other. Basically, you can mix and match which colors you want on different sides. Once you've done that, the law of segregation says, during anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes will separate onto opposite sides of the cell. Now, let's think about humans. Humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 from mom and 23 equivalent chromosomes from dad. Thus, we can say that we have 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. As I just mentioned, all the greens do not be, need to be on one side and all the reds do not need to be on the other. So with relation to human chromosomes, when you have 23 from mom and 23 from dad, do the 23 from mom need to be on one side and do the 23 from dad need to be on the other? No, you can mix and match and make all sorts of combinations. That mixing and matching is the independent assortment in the law of independent assortment. Let's say that for human chromosome pair number one, and remember there are 23 pairs, I've just drawn three, Let's say that on chromosome pair 1, there is a gene for hair color. For that gene, mom provides an allele that codes for blonde hair. Dad provides an allele that codes for black hair. That one gene for hair color is involved in just homologous pair 1. Notice we are talking about just one gene the gene for hair color on homologous pair one. One allele from mom, one allele from dad, but we are talking about one gene for hair color. Now let's suppose chromosome pair two has a gene for height. Mom's allele for chromosome two codes for shortness. Dad's allele for chromosome two codes for tallness. How the alleles for hair color mix and match themselves on which side they want to be on has absolutely nothing to do with how the alleles for height mix and match which side they want to be on. They assort themselves independently of each other, okay? The alleles for hair color assort themselves independently of the alleles for height. In other words, when we talk about the law of independent assortment, we're going to have multiple homologous pairs involved. The law of segregation, by contrast, is only about one homologous pair in relation to itself, not in relation to the other homologous pairs as we saw in the law of independent assortment. We are looking at just one homologous pair, one at a time. Remember that we said we have a gene for hair color in homologous pair one? and then mom has an allele for blonde hair and then dad has an allele for black hair? Well, during the law of segregation, those alleles are separating, okay? They are separating to each side of the cell. That's what it means by the law of segregation. Alleles for a given gene separate or segregate or split up or whatever. And this occurs during anaphase one. So let's do a quick recap. Mendel's first law, the law of segregation, which you learn about first, does not happen first. Mendel's second law, the law of independent assortment, 
which you learn second, does happen first. The law of independent assortment occurs during metaphase one. When we think about the law of independent assortment, we need to think about multiple homologous pairs in relation to one another. In the law of independent assortment, we are saying all of mom's chromosomes do not need to line up on one side. All of dad's chromosomes do not need to line up on the other. They can mix and match however they want. And how homologous pair one chooses to assort itself is independent of how another homologous pair chooses to assort itself. They assort themselves independently. The law of segregation occurs in anaphase one, where the homologous pairs split up, separate, or segregate onto the opposite sides of the cell. Therefore, the two alleles for a given gene split up during gamete production. Okay, all right. Thank you for watching. I hope this video may have relieved a little bit of your stress and that your studying will make a little more sense now. Good luck on your quizzes and exams and well, take care. Bye-bye.